Hey, how's it going, everybody? What's up? How are we all doing today? We have a pretty interesting video for you guys. For those of you that didn't see it, if you're not following BSG on Twitter, they actually posted their roadmap for presumably this year. And there is some very, very, very exciting things in here. So lads, just before we get into it, if you guys enjoy my content, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that usual stuff. That's it. No big long spiel. Just like, comment, subscribe. That's all you got to do. This is the first time in a very long time that we've gotten a roadmap from BSG. And we're going to go over the closest patch, which is going Going to be 0.13.0.5 which is going to be a technical update so we've got fixes for visual problems with flashlights the way they function and the light on weapons this i'm hoping is going to completely change the way that we play eft at the moment because for those of you that haven't really been playing eft recently there is a heavy meta and a heavy reliance on flashlights in the game. Somebody who maybe doesn't play Tarkov that much might be wondering, how could a flashlight be part of the meta? Well, let me explain that to you real quick. Flashlights, some are stronger than others, depending on which torch you're using. So some are brighter than others, and then people have found out that certain flashlights actually damn near blind a PMC when you are shooting at them. So what a lot of the fights in Tarkov have become is two people shining flashlight each flashlight chats, bleh, flashlights at each other. Why can't I say that? Basically, you can't see each other. So you're just kind of wildly spraying at each other and hoping that, you know, you kill the guy first. It's really obnoxious. It really sucks. And it's every single fight is pretty much like this. So I would love to see this get reduced. Put the flashlights back to the way they were before, where you could just use them to see people, but it wouldn't completely blind somebody if you're aiming at them. And I know there's going to be people that are going to say, but Tweak, in real life, if you have a tactical flashlight and it's 700 million lumens, you're going to blind a guy. He won't be able to see you. Dude, it's a video game. It's really annoying. It's not fun. And it's a trash meta. This is the most frustrating meta that we've had since like the KS23 and like the one tap Mosin chest shot meta. This sucks. So I'm really hoping this changes. Moving on from that before I ramble even more on it. Rework of Sky on all locations. So we're going to get a new Sky box on all maps, which is cool. Oculus audio tweaks on interchange and lighthouse. I am desperately awaiting the update on the interchange audio because interchange after that lighting update is so much more playable. All interchange needs now, Oculus Audio that actually works and we have decent culling between the levels so we can tell where people are. If somebody's on the top floor, I shouldn't have to wonder if they're in the basement below me or above me. Hopefully they get that fixed and interchange can be returned to its former glory. Maybe a little buff to Kiba, maybe a little buff to Ultramed, maybe another few little additions here and there to make the map actually populated by people. Because interchange PvP is still some of the most, just the, the most fun PvP that I have had in Tarkov, so... I really hope interchange gets fixed. We've also got changes in the headset system. So again, this is going to be a meta changing tweak to the game. I'm assuming they're going to adjust all the contacts and how they work. So I'm really excited for that. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that. Changes in the AI voice line playback system, in particular, their frequency, volume, and positioning. Maybe a scav will sound actually further away because sometimes in scav's voice line, they sound very close, but they're actually pretty far away. And then locationally being able to determine where they are. Fixing incorrect sound and volume of gunshots and explosions at short distances. Distances. So hopefully, again, this will allow us to better gauge the distance that we're hearing gunshots at. So it's not like, oh, that sounds really close, but actually it's on, you know, the opposite side of the mall outside in the bush. So that's going to be nice. Also, fixes for incorrect movement of bots in the prone position. So I'm guessing this is just, we're not going to have like slug sniper scav like leaning over the railing and he's going to like, looks like he's going to fall down or whatever. I don't know. This is going to be a really big one. So we've got the transition to Unity 2021. I thought this had already happened <laughs> in like the last patch that we got. I thought we got this already. The transition to Unity 2021, it'll allow the introduction of new technologies aimed at optimizing and updating graphics, including support for HDR, reducing memory consumption by optimizing the memory usage of locations and items. So, lads, obviously, updating from Unity 2019, Unity 2020, is that where we're on now? To Unity 2021, it's only going to be getting better and better and better and better. So, hopefully, we get a massive slew of fixes when 2021 comes in. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that a lot of the things that are really wrong with Tarkov right now are actually not really the fault of the devs, but rather limitations imposed by the engine and then of course you know it's also going to bring a slew of new bugs because of the old code that they're trying to root out and stuff so it's this whole thing so hopefully the transition to 2021 goes smoothly and i'm excited to see what happens with that we've got update 0.13.0.5 
0.13.1.0, which is another technical update. We've got some fundamental changes to the architecture of display and synchronization of players on the client and their connection to the server. This is nuts, including gradual increase in the number of players and bots in a raid to 60. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that this is only going to be the fully expanded version of Streets of Tarkov is going to hit the 60 player count, whereas smaller maps like Customs are going to have a much lower number than that. Otherwise, it would just be chaos every single raid that you're in. Not that that wouldn't be fun. You imagine loading into Shoreline or Interchange with 59 other players? Bruh, it'd be a bloodbath. It'd be so much fun. We've also got improving hit registration, which is always nice. The hit reg in Tarkov is a little bit spotty, to say the least. Increase in accuracy of positioning. So position matching of players on the server and the client. So this is really, really, really important. This actually happens mostly with streamers because if we kill another streamer, we can watch back their perspective and then we can watch back our perspective. That's where you can tell just how bad the desync is in some places. I got killed by Landmark a couple of weeks ago. When I watched it back in his point of view compared to my point of view, he basically wasn't even on my screen when I died. That's a good like illustration of the current state of like desync in the game. So anything to further improve that, very nice, very good. Noticeable increase in FPS in online raids, always good. Reduce the chance of encountering the desynchronization with the server, always good and network traffic optimization. They've also got a new culling system on old locations. So culling, I, I'm pretty sure this is how culling works. If you can't see it, it's not there for you, therefore increasing your FPS and therefore improving your performance. Culling is always good. So stuff that you can't see basically isn't rendered for you so that the entirety of the map isn't loaded in for you all the time. Optimizing RAM consumption, including elimination of possible memory leaks. So as we all know, there's a lot of memory leaks in Tarkov. They happen all the time. And optimize the rendering system for semi-transparent materials. So hopefully that also includes a rework to how glass works because glass is the most frustrating thing to shoot through and be shot at through. We've got 0.14.0.0, which is a content update. Most likely this is going to be our New Year's update around the end of December, if I had to guess. So what we're getting here is the Streets of Tarkov expansion. We're also getting the BTR on streets and a new boss for streets as well. Getting new bosses is always fun. Another big update, vaulting. I thought considering the videos that we saw on Twitter of the current progress in the vaulting mechanic and how it's being implemented, that we would be getting it much sooner than the end of the year. But unfortunately, it looks like this is only going to be coming with the Streets of Tarkov expansion. Also, armored plates for body armor and rework of hitboxes. This is going to be really nice because it's going to completely change the meta and how you loot things and how you take things off other players. Rather than taking their entire rigs, you simply remove their plates. So that's going to be really nice. It's going to streamline the whole looting process a lot. We've also got kit presets. Thank God, it's going to be so nice. You click one button, equips a kit, buys it all from the traders or the flea market or whatever. That's going to be really nice. Weapon animations when interacting with cover. Our current system's a little bit dated. You can still use it and it's still definitely very effective in certain situations, but most people don't use it. So maybe with this introduction of the new system, more people will try and use it. We have also got left shoulder shooting. So this is going to be, you know, in Counter-Strike where you can swap your view model to be on your left or your right shoulder, except in Tarkov, this is actually going to have a massive bearing on how you play out a fight because there isn't going to be such a thing as left-hand peeking or right-hand peeking anymore because now if you want to do a left-hand peek, you simply shoulder swap and you're going to be exposing less of your body. Instead of your gun being shouldered against your right shoulder, you're now going to be able to have it on your left and peek out like this. So this is going to effectively remove the entire meta of the game right now, which is to crouch and, crouch and hold a right-hand peek and wait for somebody to push you. If you miss your shot, you back off and you find another right-hand peek to hold and you crouch, and then when they come by, you kill them. And if they don't die, you reposition again to another right-hand peek somewhere else. And it's this never-ending cycle of just boring bullshit gameplay. So now you're going to be able to hold left-hand peeks, right-hand peeks, all the same, and it'll hopefully make the game a little bit more enjoyable when it gets to those sweaty PvP battles. We're also going to have a hideout expansion, which is always nice. Love to see new things in the hideout all the time. Randomized loot containers. So I'm hoping that this means that all of the crates in the game are all completely randomized and everything that you find in one crate can be found in another because that'll just make things more fun and more dynamic when you're looting things maybe except for weapon crates and ammo crates and stuff like that but every other box I'd love to see everything just be randomized it's not these boxes have tech stuff these boxes have medical loot these boxes have x it's like you can just go and loot a box and it might have just a random assortment of everything in it which I think would just be more fun 
because in a post-apocalyptic environment, who's out here organizing the boxes like it's in a Rust base or like in Minecraft? Like nobody's organizing shit. They're just throwing everything into whatever box it'll fit in. You know, it makes more sense. We've also got a rework of recoil mechanics of all weapon types. So this is going to completely turn the whole scape of recoil in the game completely on its head, considering now we've just had flat reductions of recoil all across the board. Now it's going to be a rework for recoil mechanics of all weapons. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what that means. We haven't seen it yet, so I can't comment on it. We've also got quick pistol transition. So this is the ability to drop your gun onto a sling and then pull out your sidearm faster than reloading, presumably. However, I don't see this being used too much unless you're rocking an RSH-12 on your hip. We've also got suppressor durability, sound variations, and subsonic ammo. Not really sure what this means. This is just kind of three words, just kind of thrown out there. Like, suppressor durability, yes, I understand that, but like, sound variations and subsonic ammo. Is this like sound variations for subsonic ammo types or something, so that everything doesn't sound the same? Like, every bullet has a different sound to it? Probably. I don't know. We've also got an ammunition loading interface. So hopefully an ammunition loading interface means that you can choose the bottom 10 rounds of your mag and then, you know, you can like save presets for what kind of rounds you want to go into your mag and in what order. You'll be able to set your top 10 or 20 rounds to armor penetrating rounds and then maybe the lower would have still armor pen but like maybe higher flesh damage or something like that. We're also going to have sight brightness adjustments so hopefully this will mean that we can actually use optics in nighttime raids even though I know it's not realistic. Holy shit it's a game. I know I'm aware. Also user interface rework so the whole user interface is going to be completely reworked so that's something awesome to look forward to at the end of the year. We're also going to have a major quest rebalance which I think is massive massively needed right now with all of the new quests put into the game and considering how quickly we progress through the quests I think there could be a big rebalance of quest rewards XP and soft skill XP and stuff like that which would be nice we've also got a rebalance of levels skills and mastering so this could finally be soft skill rework that I've been looking for for years. Bipods and stabilizing firearms with cover. So this means you're finally going to be able to use that bipod on your SV-98 to presumably hold your breath forever, which would be kind of cool. Maybe we can put a bipod on the RPK and some other stuff and sit there and just lay down some crazy fire with no recoil. That'd be kind of fun. Choose which body part to heal via hotkey. This is interesting. So I would basically have a hotkey for my chest and my head. Being able to set a hotkey to heal your chest first and then your head would be absolutely sick. Also, still waiting on a system where I can just hold my heal key and she'll just keep healing until I'm fully healed. Hopefully that's also coming. Helmet flashlight. So I guess helmet flashlight will finally work at the end of the year. We've had this for ever and it just doesn't really work but it, it's coming I guess uh, <laughs> meds and food consumption upon double click so that's kind of cool I guess you don't have to right click use it maybe you right click discard stuff all the time which I have definitely done a few times so that's cool and then we've also got some guns here so the AK-12 is coming the PKM is coming the RPD is also coming oh wait a minute the SVT isn't this the fully auto 762 by 51 I think it is right and then we've got the 9A91 and then we've also got the UBGL for the SCAR and then other so obviously they're not going to tell us everything because they have to keep some stuff a secret otherwise it's boring when the patch comes if you know everything that's in it so I would much rather they keep certain things silent so we get to experience it when the patch comes out so lads that is a look at the preliminary roadmap to escape from Tarkov sick roadmap I love when BSG does stuff like this I do kind of wish that there was maybe some dates just you know hey doesn't even have to be specific and be like hey July give us a little tease and I know I've said before that I don't like it when they give dates because then people get hyped and then if they miss the date people get pissed off but listen I'm being greedy with all that being said guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you made it this far in the video please make sure to like comment subscribe and all that lovely stuff and I will see you guys on the next video peace out my dudes